Hey everyone, what's up? I've been away the past couple of days looking at colleges with my son. He is a senior in high school, so we have been making the rounds, checking out uh, different universities. So I am back, so let's talk about what is going on. Again, we see the same repetitive pattern and it's something that I've been talking about for a long time. Let me, let me backtrack a little bit and take you back once again for those of you who have not been following me for very long and even those of you who have been with me as subscribers or followers. In um, late 2015, 2015, when uh, the Fed first started to hint and then openly talk about reversing monetary policy, that is the policy that had been in effect for the prior nine years, all right? Uh, which was cutting interest rates, and then during the great financial crash, uh, engaging in a lot of extraordinary monetary operations, quantitative easing, that sort of stuff. When the Fed started talking about its intention to reverse course, I said that was the end of the bond market rally. I said it was the end of the decline in interest rates. I said it was the beginning of the end of the, uh, the strength in the U.S. dollar. And I said it would be the beginning of a new cycle of inflation. Now, back then, these were almost uh, heretical predictions. I mean, nobody had these predictions at that time. And I made it very clear to the people who were my followers or subscribers. I said, it's not very hard. You're, you're dealing with a monopolist when it comes to rate setting. And when they say they're gonna raise rates, that's the time you wanna sell treasuries. That's the time you want to expect interest rates to rise. Uh, and that is also the time when you want to expect inflation to pick up. Now that the latter statement was something that would never have been um, uh, you know, taken seriously by any mainstream economist and certainly nobody at the time, even if maybe there were a couple of people saying that would be the end of the, the bond market rally, which I, I recall no one saying that other than myself, you, you certainly would have had nobody telling you that higher interest rates would lead to higher inflation. But I explained the whole thing at the time uh, I wasn't yet, uh, actually, I wasn't yet writing um, or publishing the uh, MMT Trader Report, but I was a regular contributor to realmoneyatthestreet.com, and I wrote about this. I said, that's it. I mean, the whole cycle is reversing the cycle that we had in place from uh, 2006 until 2015, which was the end of rate hikes in 20, 2006 to the rate cuts and the quantitative easing during the great financial crash and beyond, that cycle was over and we were starting in the other direction. And again, this was a heretical statement. Nobody said this. Nobody talked about the rise in inflation. And, and I can assure you that if I was uh, in a debate with any economist, they would, they would claim the exact opposite. They would say that, you know, the, your standard line, rate hikes, they squash inflation, it's taken away the punch bowl. That was another thing. I said it was going to be bullish for the economy. It was a net fiscal expansion, all of these things. So fast forward to, and I think what, 10-year uh, yields back at that time were bouncing around between probably 160, 170, all the way down. I think they got as low as 130. 135, 137, something like that. Fast forward to today, and by the way, we had the inflation was uh, negative. We had year over year, if you looked at the CPI, it was negative. Uh, gold was uh, at about 1,050 at that time. Uh, the dollar was still on its way higher. I don't, I don't recall exactly now where the dollar index was, uh, but probably I would say somewhere around 97, 98 at that time, and it ultimately went up to 104 before uh, it, it peaked out. Uh, and all along, I said, you gotta be selling into that. Now was it 90, even below 90. 
So fast forward to today, what I'm saying, you got the 10 year yield pushing towards 3%. And by the way, I'm gonna talk about that 3% in a second. You have gold at $1,330, okay? But it had made some thrusts up to almost $1,400 uh, during that time. And it'll get there again, it'll get there again. You had the uh, the 10 year treasury future in 2015 at I believe 127, you're looking at it at 120, even below 120. Um, and, and you had oil at uh, what I think it was at uh, 38, it might've been at 38 or, or below at that time. You're looking at it now at 62, okay? So all these things absolutely uh, came true. And I'm here to say, uh, very matter-of-factly, that these trends are going to continue. You're going to see higher interest rates. And let me talk about that 3% threshold because we have seen recently some analysts, some big firms, PIMCO to, to name one, uh, I guess famous for you know, it's, it, it's bond market acumen, maybe only when Bill Gross was there, but who knows, but saying that they're calling a top in the 10-year yield at 3% because inflation is going to peak out. Inflation is not going to peak out. And looking at inflation as a predictor of bond prices is foolish. It, it means you do not understand fundamentally who sets the interest rate that is the monopolist that is the federal reserve R inflation could be zero inflation could be negative if the fed wanted to hike interest rates to 25 percent it has absolutely the ability to do that okay so it's irrelevant what the inflation rate is number one and number two the very act of setting rates higher equates to a price hike throughout the general economy. I've been through that so many times because rate hikes equate to price increases. The cost of credit is reflected in the cost of all goods and services. You raise rates, everything else goes up. You lower rates, everything else goes down. That's how come when they took rates down from what, uh, six and a quarter percent or wherever it was, down to zero, you didn't have inflation. A lot of these idiot quacks, you know, they're printing money. They thought it was going to go through the roof, the inflation. It went to zero. It went negative. Why? Because you cut prices by virtue of the fact that you lowered interest rate. So all of these trends. And those of you who have been with me for a while, you've been building a position in short treasuries. We are killing it on this. You've been building a position in the inflation cycle. We've been killing it on this. All right? Everybody else is floundering around, trying to figure out what is going on, trying to call a bottom in the dollar every two weeks. Dollar's going down. Dollar's going down. Every single time that I see a rally in the dollar, what do I do? I add more dollar shorts to my position. Dollar's going down. Rates are going up. We're still in the very early stages of this cycle, and people don't understand it. It's being driven by... The central bank is being driven by the Fed. Now other central banks are entering into the same game and you still have two big behemoth monsters out there, the ECB and the Bank of Japan who haven't even gotten started yet, but they will. They're all gonna be aligned in the same direction. That's how it works. So we have been in this very, very early. We stay in here. Now the one thing I, I do with the people who are with me is I help them with the the mental game, it's hard for them to stay in. They see these fluctuations, they see these corrections, they I should have got out, I had that problem. I say, no, you stay, you stay. And then what happens? It always comes back, it gets better, and you're like, Mike, thank you, I stayed. Thank you for telling me that, I stayed. But every time that when there's another correction, you know, they get nervous, they get scared, and what do I do? I help them with that, I help them with that. And they stay, and that's how you ride a big trend. We build a position. We come out way, way ahead. And when will we know when to get out? That's easy. That's easy. Because as I've said many times in the past, they tell us when it's time to get out. The monopolists 
Tell us when it is time to get out. It is our job to sit tight. They tell us. All of the rest of you, you don't know. You're going to be guessing every two weeks. You're going to be looking for a bottom in this or a top in that. Not us. We stand like silent sentries. Market just takes it and we just keep cha-ching, cranking out the profits, holding on to these positions, building a position, building a position and riding it. That's what it's all about, friends. That is what it's all about. So, yeah, I mean, we called it, I called it, I'm still calling it, I'm going to continue calling it until they, the ones that have their hands on the buttons and the levers, they're going to tell me, and the rest of you are not going to know, you're going to be floundering around, looking at this and looking at that, who knows what you look at, watching CNBC, the clowns there, we're going to know, you're going to be guessing the whole entire way.